Hey guys, this is Christian with Collision Hub and we are in Detroit, Michigan to talk about weld bonding. Now it was probably about 1999, 2000 when I first started seeing the first bulletins come across my desk on weld bonding and the effects that are going to have and it became all the talk of the industry and then it kind of faded off a little bit. But last year at SEMO when Chrysler announced their official position on the, on the process, well it came back to the top of the surface. So we wanted to sit down and visit with Doug a little bit more in depth about how that procedure came to be and some of the customer focus that Chrysler put on it. Cool. So the reason we did it really was about quality of the car after repair. Um, we know that in a manufacturing plant we can control everything in the build process, but when you get to the field and you do a repair, the concern is always safety, corrosion, you know, how will the vehicle react, the dynamics of the whole car. The adhesive and the resistance spot welding duplicates the original build and provides the customer everything they had, maybe a little bit better, and it's always fine to err on the side of better. So years ago we did approve resistance welding with adhesives, weld bonding as we call it, and now what we said is that that is the method of repair. All the panels in the car should be put back on that way during crash repair, providing you can access them with the welders. Uh, we also put a spec out, minimum spec for the welding equipment so that we're not using substandard uh, welders to hang panels. Let's go into that a little bit more detail, I guess, what you can share. So sometimes I think there's some misconceptions out there that the OEM comes <laughs> sometimes late to the game or adds a procedure without thinking about the, the repercussions or the applications of the collision repair. But you guys put a lot of time and effort and energy and research into this before making that position statement. What's the process for how that comes to be for us in the collision repair industry? I guess what I want to do first is to step back and say that it's been over 15 years ago that we started working on this. Um, the reality was back in around the 2000 range, equipment was coming to be available to shops. You know, step forward now 12, 13 years and almost every shop that wants to be in this business already has the equipment. If not, it's a, definitely a, a purchase they've got to make. Uh, you can't fix cars the old ways anymore. The metals have changed and that's what's really driven the whole thing. So when we do something like this, we looked at the equipment, we looked at the adhesives that are out there. Uh, we looked at the process, would it work? And in the end, the answer to all three of those was a yes. And when I say yes about the adhesives, we identified two in particular that met our internal criteria for corrosion protection and strength. So it's a wonderful repair if the instructions are followed. It is a great product. I think I'm, we're more, more of us are learning more and more about the benefits and it's not something that we thought a long time was going to be some of the advanced models or maybe some of the high-end luxury cars. But one thing I want to drive home about the position statement that you guys took is that it's not just for, say, new models coming forward, that this was really more of a retroactive position statement. So if I'm in a collision center now and I'm doing a replacement on a Chrysler product, it's this procedure, quarter panel, rear body, is that kind of the case for that? That's correct. We've got the capability to make the repair and fix the car properly so it applies to everything in the past and into the future. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what year it is. That's what creates the best quality repair and we just had to come out and say it that way so the industry would follow along and, and kind of step it up so to speak. One of the things I've been impressed with, there's, there's another misconception in our industry that sometimes that the dealer doesn't necessarily care about the after sale, so the after effects of the collision repair, but I've been impressed with how, specifically Chrysler lately, you guys are really taking an interest in the longevity of that car, knowing that your customers are going to own it for a long time. How important is that to Chrysler to, for the benefit of their vehicle owners? Well, it, it's critical. So we've put a tremendous amount of investment into the cars to, uh, to attain the quality levels that others have had. Um, we don't want that to disappear post-collision. Uh, all the dealers are concerned about it because it's not just the original purchaser, it's the second and third and fourth. And we look at the age of cars on road now, it's well into the 10-year the range, right? We're between 10 and 20 on average. Uh, if you're not making a repair quality at three years, two years, you're going to have nothing but garbage down the road. So it's important. These, these are long-term investments now. The price of cars has gone up with inflation. Uh, it's a huge investment you know, basically very close to the price of a small home. So you need to have a good repair done or it's not the same. What's down the road in the future for, for Chrysler and the division around collision repair? Anything that, you know, y'all guys are working on now? I know I see you at a lot of industry events out working with a lot of repairs. What can we expect next? It's kind of difficult to say. Um, I think as an industry, we're going to see more aluminum 
We're going to see more uh, exotic materials, maybe carbon fibers, uh, both structurally and cosmetically. Those are going to be the next phases that become more challenging to repair. Um, it, none of it, it's kind of like rocket science that's, that's come forward. This is stuff that was invented years and years ago. Now we're going to need to fix it. If it's structural, those are the ones that are going to be challenging, and we're working on them. Well, I got to tell you, on behalf of the collision repairers, I know that you know, we love doing the cars and we love doing them the right way, and we really love it with the OEM. Helps us by telling us what's the best repair for that car. So we really do appreciate the position statement. It makes a difference for a lot of the repairs. So thank you for that. So what we're going to do next is we're going to get out of the garage with Madison. She's out there getting ready and prepping a quarter panel. We're going to go through the weld bond replacement procedures on a quarter, step by step, take you through the process, and hopefully help you in your daily collision repair. What's up guys, this is Madison. I'm out here in the garage with some professionals in the industry, Pro Spot and Lord Fuser. And we're here to talk about some weld bonding. And about 10, 11 years ago, weld bonding was all that we talked about and it kind of dropped off the charts. Now it's picking back up again. We're gonna start talking about it a lot more. What exactly is weld bonding? What weld bonding is today is the method of using squeeze type resistant spot welding. And we're gonna bring two panels together, but we're also gonna use adhesive inside the hem flange where the adhesive will be used for NV&H, noise, vibration, harshness control, maybe stiffening the vehicle. Uh, it can be also used for sealing, protecting the joint from corrosion, and you know anything down that road where we may want to you know, have more control, more strength, uh, add some collision protection, uh, enhancement at one, especially today, because we're moving into so many advanced high-strength steels being thinner, we have to be much more careful how we do the welding and the adhesive together. And maybe I'll turn it over to Ron, where he can talk a little bit about the welding part of it here, because we have to be very careful about how we handle these new metals. Yeah, with the welding, it's an excellent uh, procedure using resistance spot welding with weld bonding, because we, uh, using MIG welding, obviously we put too much heat into the joint, and therefore the adhesive will most likely caught on fire. With resistant spa welding, we are not only using a really short weld time, but we also use a lot of squeeze pressure. So we put a lot of pressure uh, across the stack with the metal and the adhesives, and then we use a very short burst of current. So actually what's going to happen is that we will break through the adhesive and uh, create a structural metal-to-metal -metal weld, but around the surrounding of the weld would actually have the weld uh, adhesives all the way surrounding the uh, the weld nugget. I guess they'd so be encapsulated, if you would call it, they'd be encapsulated. Yeah, there. exactly. So not only give you a nice structural bond, but also a nice uh, rust protection all the way up to the weld nugget as well. So exactly how do we use this equipment? Well, as I said, you know the resistance spot welding is a process of uh, using in a high current. We're using up around 10,000 amps for a very short time, maybe less than a half a second a weld time. And during that time, um, we have a very high resistance of the metal. So that's why the, it resists the current as it passes through the metal and creates this enormous heat, but only very, in a very short time. And we'll show you more later exactly how it works that way. But uh, the equipment nowadays, we have uh, different types of equipment. But in this case, we're using an automatic welder that actually senses the thickness of the weld stack and the resistance across the weld before it's welding. And it will clean out any adhesives or any uh, other materials in between the, the panels before it actually executes the high weld current. So it's an automatic application of the current. So the operator, in this case, don't have to set any settings uh, knowing what adhesive it is or how thick it is and what's in between and how many layers. All that is taken care of by the welder itself. And on the, on the adhesive side, Madison, I think we'll, we'll, our, it'll be very simple because we'll just uh, be using a simple handgun to pump the and mix the adhesive, or maybe at a shop may want to choose to use a pneumatic air gun to pump the adhesive. So that, that's probably the, the equipment side of it. So what are some advantages of using the weld bonding and the pro spot welders? Well, I think now the industry is changing dramatically. The new steels have really put a new look at what we're doing. We can't, it's not like the, our grandfather steels anymore, as they say. With these ultra high strength steels, uh, the manufacturers are now very concerned that you put too much hint, heat into these metals during the weld process because they're very heat sensitive materials. So it's a perfect combination here to add strength and rigidity to 
the panel replacement by adding resistance bar welding and of course the adhesive. So um, I think that itself uh, lends itself very good for, for this procedure. From my perspective, actually the heat the adhesive is going to be giving us some additional strength, if you will, stiffening, sound control. But uh, in my past from being a body shop manager before in the other life, I would say it's a, this, this process is going to be very good for me uh, in, the term, in the terms of uh, efficiency for my body shop. Where like when I, when I weld bond this joint, I would normally, you know, uh, weld bonding, I'm going to come back and put my adhesive in, I'm going to use my welder, and when I'm done welding, I'm done. I'm ready for primer. In the past with uh, MIG welding, which was great in, in, its, in the era of the, the, you know, welding on that proper steel, I had to come back and I had to finish all the weld nuggets, I had to come back and grind all this, clean it all up, and then clean the car up. A lot of that's eliminated. And the other thing that I, I think is very important is when I'm done on this side of the car, I look like the other side of the car. I have that pre-accident appearance. The car looks appropriate for customer satisfaction. All right, so what exactly tools, equipment, are we gonna need in the shop? Actually, with the welding end of it, uh, we need um, the welders or the resistance bar welding have, have changed as well. So we have, uh, in this case, automatic welders, but in general, we need a three-phase power, uh, 220 volt or 400 volt, 480 volt, wherever you are in the world. Uh, to hook up, uh, but um, that's what you need. You need a three-phase solid uh, electrical installation to run these, these, uh, these welders. This is a great procedure for collision repair. More and more OEMs are recommending it. So where do us as technicians get training for this? Well, for ProSpot, you get training obviously from our field people. When you purchase the equipment from us, we come in and train you on the floor, you know, on the cars and so forth. But we also have training programs available online and also some alliance programs with ICAR that is available for uh, the procedures. So um, obviously we see this as a very much of a growing procedures, not only uh, with the weld bond, but also resistance power welding in general. So uh, the training programs are available um, from us and I'm sure Lord Fuser have similar well, at Lord, Lord Fuser Adhesives, we, have, we do have five uh, one-hour, we call them lunch and learn programs, where they will actually come into the shop and train people how to use the products. And we had, uh, we had one program is specific on weld bonding. Uh, we have several, uh, several videos online, probably 26, 28 videos, where you can go on there and watch a short uh, video on how to use the products properly. Uh, we can also turn to ICAR for training. Uh, ICAR has several courses that will address weld bonding. And, uh, you know, the, as far as training, training is very available if uh, you just need to go look for it. So thank you guys for explaining the procedures and everything. I learned a lot today. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to go through the well bonding procedures and put a quarter panel on this car.